In this video, we're going to take a quick look at, at one of the identity properties of logarithms and exponentials. That is when we have something raised to a logarithm. Um, in this case, we have 10 being raised to the log x. And remember, if the log doesn't have a base written in, it's automatically a base 10. Now, there's a property here, and you know you might already know it, um, and it's actually really quick and easy once you know it, but I want to talk about where the property comes from just for a minute. So what is this equal to? Well, let's call it question mark. And so we're going to use the definition log to figure out what question mark is and show how this property works. So the definition of log says that if you have 10 to the y equals, let's say, x, because use the same variables we have in here. Well, rewritten as a logarithm, the base is 10, so that's a log base 10. This is what we're taking the log of, because log gives us the exponent as an output. So log base 10 of x equals y. And again, if it's base 10, Typically, we don't write the log, or the base, excuse me. It's called the common log. So we're going to apply this to this. We're given it in exponential form. And this is our question mark over here. So here's our 10, and this is our y. Now look at what this says. This says the log of x, the log of the right-hand side, is equal to y. Like I said, this is our y here. So the log of question mark is equal to the exponent. So we're going to put that there. E equals the log base 10 of x. Now again, there's no uh, base written here. It's automatically base 10. So if, we, if the log of question mark equals the log of x, then question mark equals x. And that shows our property. What this says is 10 raised to the log base 10 of x equals x. So this is called an identity property because we get back to where we started. Another way to think about this is a composition of inverse functions. These two functions are inverses of each other. Remember, when we compose inverse functions, we should get back to where we started. So what's happening is x is going into first the log. So we're taking log of x, then 10 is getting raised to the log of x power. So we're composing two inverse functions and getting back to where we started.